Hey, welcome to Church Online this weekend. It is Palm Sunday. We're so glad to have you here. In just a moment, we're going to go into worship. The band's coming out. It's going to be an amazing time in worship. Let me encourage you on a couple of things. The first is you need to fully engage in Church Online, so stand up. Maybe put this on your big screen. Come on, if you're on YouTube, you can get the app right there and make it as big as possible. Turn the volume up, sing along, worship God together, pray with your family in the time of prayer, and then respond to God's word. You'll get a whole lot at a church online, all right? So it's gonna be a great time. Before that, a couple of things. In this video, you'll see a couple of links. The first is a connection card. If you're ready to take a next step with City Hills, or if you're new, just kind of want to know more about who we are, that connection card, it's safe, it's secure, nobody's going to come visit you, for sure, nobody's calling you, we're just going to send you one note, say thanks for coming to church, it's a great way to stay connected with us, there's also a prayer request card there, or pastoral need, anything that we can pray with you about, it'd be our honor to do that. And then there's small groups. Come on, that's the lifeblood of City Hills, especially right now. We need to stay connected. Even when we can't be together, we can still be connected. And we do that in a virtual small group. You can find all of that in the links in this video. Here's the last thing before we worship God. And that is thank you for your consistent and faithful giving in this season. Come on, your giving still making a difference. There's a giving link there. You can text to give. That's how I choose to give. A lot of us uh, are giving that way. But I'm just encouraging you to stay faithful and consistent in your giving in this season. Come on, we're partnering with organizations already on the ground in our community and around the world to bring hope and healing in Jesus' name. You are making a massive difference inside our church family and to our community and the world around us. All right, get ready. Stand up. Let's worship God together. Welcome to church. And hey, thank you for joining us. Let's worship together.
to say who is like the Lord King forever Jesus reigns Jesus reigns there is
right now, just lift that up. Say, way maker. Way maker. don't see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when I don't see it you work say even when I don't feel it you working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when I don't see it you working Welcome to week number four, the final week of our four-part series leading up to Easter called Make Room. I'll get to that in a moment. I can't believe it's already Easter season, y'all. Come on, our team's put together a great Easter celebration for you next week. I call it the Super Bowl of the New Testament church. I mean, this is like we built our faith on the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus that He lives. We're going to celebrate that big. Uh, our team's putting together some great ways for your family to celebrate. We're going to celebrate together. We're going to kind of unify as a church family, and it's just going to be an amazing, amazing time. I can't wait for that. I promise you a message of hope, a word of hope. You can kind of write on your bathroom mirror every week in this series, in this season that we're in together. I want to give you that word of hope before I get into today's message. It's found in the book of Isaiah, and it says this, Tell everyone who is discouraged. All right, I'm looking at you. Tell everybody who's wondering, are these kids ever going to go back to school and get out my house? Tell everybody who's discouraged, is this going to work? How are we going to make it? What's going to happen? Are we going to bounce back? What about my 401k? What about the economy? Where we go? What just is the world going to be able to tell everybody who's discouraged? Be strong. So here's my message to you today. Be strong. You're discouraged and wonder what and how. Be strong and don't be afraid. Well, pastor, you're just denying reality, you know. That's what realists like to say. You're just not, I'm just a realist. Well, sometimes you're just a pessimist that masquerades as a realist. Come on. It's not denying reality. It's putting your trust in the last part of this verse that God is coming to our rescue, everybody. God is coming to our rescue. Hear that word for you today. If you're discouraged and just, you know, you've been okay for a couple of weeks, but man, now I'm getting down. I don't know. This is starting to, listen to me. Be encouraged today. Be strong today. 
Don't be afraid today. God is coming to your rescue. You ought to write that in the comments. I need to get a digital amen about that. I may amen myself on that. God's coming to our rescue. God's coming to our rescue and not... Come on, He won't be one minute late. God's coming right on time. Amen, everybody? God's coming to your rescue. All right, let me get you in this. Uh, the fourth message in this series of making room. We've been talking about making room in our hearts, making room in our minds, making room in our expectation, making room in our faith. Come on, we just we just been pushing out some stuff that's been crowding our lives together and just, just saying, I'm spring cleaning some of this stuff out of all. I'm just making some room for God. We talked about margin. We talked about raising our expectation. We talked about last week our mind, making room, putting faith in our mind. And this week it's Palm Sunday, everybody. Come on, an amazing day. Palm Sunday together we celebrate the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. Beginning Holy Week this week, the, the most holy week of our calendar of faith together. And we're going to make room. Here it is. Get ready for this last message. We're going to get ready to make room for worship on Palm Sunday. This may be my favorite message I bring in this whole series. We're going to make room for worship together. And I want to give you this scene before I read it to you out of God's Word. Zechariah the prophet is about 550 years, 540 some odd years prior to the birth of Christ. Zechariah is a contemporary of Haggai the prophet. And, and, and you'll, you'll see, anyway, if, if you look in, in Bible uh, uh, timeline, He's about 500 years, 550 years before Jesus uh, takes his entry into Jerusalem. And he sees this whole scene and he prophesies this scene. And there's two main details. Zechariah, the ninth chapter specifically, talk about it. And there's two really big details. The first one is that the Messiah is going to be riding on a donkey on a colt. And Jesus fulfills that. The second one is there's going to be worship and happy people. You read it for yourself, Zechariah 9. There's going to be happiness and worship and praise to God. And then this is what happens in Matthew, the 21st chapter. Look on the screen. Follow along with me. So they brought the donkey and the colt, and they placed their cloaks on them, their, their outer jackets, on them for Jesus to sit on. Now catch this. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and while others in the very large crowd cut branches, palm branches from the trees, where we get this from, and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went ahead of him, that very large crowd, spread their coats, spread these palm branches, went ahead of him, and those that follow him. So he's got a crowd in the front and a crowd in the back. Come on, it's a party everywhere Jesus wins. <laughs> just a party everywhere. And they're shouting, listen to this, Hosanna to the Son of God, and blessed is He who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Man, they are worshiping with all they've got on the way in, behind Jesus. They're laying their cloaks down. They're laying these palm branches that signify worship and kingship in front of Jesus. And the Bible says when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred. That's important. And they asked, who is this? Like, what? man, this has got to be somebody like amazingly important. I mean, just the amount of worship and praise and the tenor of the crowd is so great. The whole city is stirred and asked, who is this? And the crowds answered, this is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. There's so much to preach to you here. I wish I had 45 minutes I could bring you, or an hour. I may do it, just a whole Bible study. We'll do it together online, just that I could give you on this whole thing. But i got to give you two big points here that I want to focus on on Palm Sunday, that worship, if you'll make room in worship, you make room for worship this Palm Sunday. Come on, just press out all the other stuff, getting your attention, and let's just put worship at the center of our lives today. Two points, write this down. Number one, worship made Room for Jesus to move. Worship made room for Jesus to move. And listen to me, it will make room in your life for Jesus to enter your world. Your life. It'll move out some other distractions, some other things, some other people, 
some other negative thoughts, some other anxieties, some other worries. It, 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 worship has a way of preparing the way for Jesus to move in your life. You need to write amen to that. Worship has a way. Your worship has a way of preparing the way for Jesus to move in your life. In the Old Testament, there's this verse in Hosea, and I really like it, and, and you probably have just skipped over in your Bible reading plan. Hosea is a short book. You think, man, I not a lot of prophecy in there. I don't hear it talked about a whole lot. But there's a really important verse there with a lot of principal prophecy I want to show you to. Look at this, Hosea 10 and 11. The Bible says it like this, that Judah will plow. Just stay with me. Judah's going to plow, and Jacob, Israel, will break up the ground. Judah will plow. Write that down. Judah is going to plow. Judah literally means, it is translated from Hebrew, it literally means praise. So you could read it like this. Praise will plow. I wish, I, I wish you were here and you were screaming amen because I'd preach to you so good right now that praise has a way of plowing up things in my life. It prepares the rows of my heart so that I can plant the good seed of God's Word in my life and harvest comes out. But it starts with praise. It starts with worship to God. Judah is going to... Come on, it, it plows the way in my life. It just plows up all that broken, hard, stony ground in my heart that I'm, you know, I've calloused over from worry and just the, you know, the last month or so that we've been walking in this together, in this journey, this unprecedented time in our history. And I'm just telling you this week, you got to make room for some worship now. You need to have a praise break because praise plows up all of that stuff. All of that stuff in your heart and mind and in your family and in your workplace. And it, it, praise just has a way to make room and they're singing and shouting to God. Hosanna in the highest. They're making a way for Jesus to move in their life. During this season, listen to me, especially during this season, write this down. We're going to have to replace our worry with worship and replace our panic with praise. I'm calling in this last message of making room to replace all the worry in your mind with worship to God. Replace all the panic that you feel with praise to God. Come on, let's replace worry about the future with worship to God. Let's replace panic and panic buying toilet paper. I'm looking at you with praise to God. God's going to take care of us. God's on the throne. I'm going to worship God. Come on, this Palm Sunday, I know I've been down for a month or so. I know we're in the thick of this journey together. This, t this, this really tough season we're going through together as a family, as a community. But listen, I'm going to make room for praise in my life, for worship. To I'm going to replace all that wor worry I got and make it worship. I'm going to replace all that panic and make it praise. I'm going to let it plow up some stuff in my life. I would type amen wherever you're watching. That I'm talking about in all caps. Type amen to that. You know, in the Old Testament, David knew how to focus on worship. He knew worship was his way to win. He could focus his mind when he would get down. And listen, he got down. And he would get discouraged. And listen to me, he would get discouraged. And he would get to feeling sorry for himself. And he felt sorry for himself. And he would start thinking, God, why? And you could read in the Psalms, he would say things like, God, why are you letting them do this? My favorite, actually, verse in most all of the Psalms is when David asked God, God, would you break the teeth of the wicked? That's my favorite part. God, just give them a, just, just punch a tooth out. That's what I'm talking about. That's, that's how I pray. God, punch a tooth out of people that don't, that don't want it. You know what I'm saying? Just like, and so David is down and discouraged and he, he's walking through this dark season. And he realizes, my only way out of this, listen, my only way to prepare the way for God to move in my life is, is worship. Look what he says in Psalm 42 and 5. He says, well, he starts talking to himself. That's my favorite talk to myself. Come on. I answer myself a lot of times, which is, which is how you know. And so David starts talking to himself and he says, Why, my soul, are you so downcast? He's in one of these tough depressions that he gets in this funk that I don't know how to get out of. Why are you so downcast? And why are you so disturbed within me? And then he tells himself what to do. 
He tells himself, I'm going to replace all of this worry with some worship. I'm going to replace all this panic in my heart with some praise to God. He says, David, he's talking to himself, put your hope in God, for I will yet praise Him. There He is, my Savior and my God. Sometimes you got to talk yourself into worship. Not worry, not fear, not anxiety. you got to focus on something else. you got to fix your mind and fix your mouth. Come on, last week we talked about your mind. This week I'm going to talk about your mouth. you got to say some stuff. you got to worship God in that situation. you gotta, you got to take a praise break right in the middle where the world feels like it's caving in around you. Come on, I'm not trying to fix it in the natural. I'm not trying to work in my own strength. I'm going to God. I'm talking my soul into worshiping God. And when you do, you'll start replacing doubt with faith. You'll start replacing worry with trust. You'll start replacing anxiety with hope again. You'll start replacing lies that you've believed with the truth of God. And God has offered you this exchange in worship. Look at this. Look at what Isaiah 61 says. He says, the Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me. You remember Jesus read this very scripture in the, in the temple. And he said in the synagogue, I'm sorry, he said to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes. Catch this exchange. Uh, you give me all the ashes of the stuff you've burnt down in your life. Your forsaken dreams. The stuff you thought that was going to happen. The relationships you've burned down. All, all I've got is ashes. He said, you, you give me that and I'll give you a crown of beauty. One of my favorite passages in all the scripture. And I'm going to give you the oil of joy. For all that worry and mourning, weeping. And, and this Palm Sunday, you may be in that season. And I'm telling you, God is offering you in exchange the oil of joy. I love how He says that. The oil of joy for that mourning. And then He said, I'm going to trade. Watch this. Here, here's how He ends. I'm going I'm to have a garment of praise instead of the spirit of despair. And I feel like our world's in that spirit of despair, feeling like, what are we going to do? How's this going to work out? Is this ever going to rebound? Listen, let me tell you how. If you'll exchange that spirit of despair for a garment of praise. I'm going to worship God. I've told you this before. I've got to tell you again. Worship is to God, but it's for you. I'm going to say that again so you can type that in your notes. Worship is to God. We worship God and Him alone, but it's for you. It, lives, it goes up to God, but then God's presence comes down to you. And your soul starts to lift. And the heaviness and the despair that I'm feeling starts leaving me. And suddenly purpose is restored. And my pain is healed. And my soul is at rest. And my mind is at peace. And worship plows. Praise plows. It made a way. Come on, in that, in that first Palm Sunday, Jesus riding into Jerusalem, it made a way, worship made a way for Jesus to come in. And it will make a way for Him to come to your world. Here's the second thing i got to give you today. Write this down. Worship not just, doesn't just make a way, but worship draws people to Jesus. Your worship, especially in hard times, draws people to to Jesus. Remember what it said, Matthew 21. Let me read it to you again. Jesus enters Jerusalem and underline this in your Bible. The whole city was stirred. The whole city was stirred. The whole you catching this? The whole city of Jerusalem is stirred and asked, "Who is this?" Listen to me. Especially what we're living through right now in our community. People are watching the response of believers. People are watching the response on, on Facebook and what you're saying. Or maybe if you're still working, able to go in, in your office or, or, or the, the peer group that you have or the people in your sphere of influence, the people on your block, on your cul-de-sac. They're watching. And the whole city is stirred. And they're not just stirred by a guy on a donkey. They're stirred by worship. They're stirred by this amazing act of worship, this laying my cloak down, putting palm branches down, shouting at the top of their lungs about Hosanna coming in. And they said, who is this? And the world is asking that question now. 
Who is this that gives you strength when I feel like giving up? Who is this that puts the smile on your face consistently like there's joy always there even when there's no reason to have joy? Who is this that's given you hope when it seems like we're in a hopeless situation and all hope is gone? Who is this that's given you new purpose and reason for living and fulfillment in your soul? Who is this? And listen to me, i got to get this word in you. Worship is the thing that will make everybody else look and go, there's something about this man. I'm encouraging you on this Palm Sunday week as we go into Holy Week, let's make it all about Jesus. Come on, let's be that Jesus-centered people. Let's be that Jesus lifting up, that Jesus exalting, that His name is above every other name. That His name is on our lips this week. Come on. We're talking about the good things of God. We're we're praising God. You need to have a praise break in your home. When I get done here, take 15 more minutes after you watch service today, after you've seen kids online, the online experience for your kids today, and just put on some more worship music. I know we've worshipped an amazing time of worship together this Palm Sunday, but put on some more worship. You can't do too much to make a way for Jesus to move in your life. And if I'm just telling you, if you'll live in that posture of worship, you'll make room in your life, not for more news, not for more Facebook, not for more negative reports, but for worship to God. That This Palm Sunday, that's it. I'm changing my focus. I was looking at what's wrong. Now I'm going to look at Jesus because He's on His way in. I was looking at what I don't have. Now my focus is on Him and what He's providing. I was looking at how bad it was going. Now I'm looking that He's on His way. He's going to rest. Come on, God is going to rescue us. That's what Isaiah said. Come on, I'm, I'm going to make it about worship. And when you do, I'm telling you, I believe, listen to me as your pastor this Palm Sunday, i got to get this in your heart. Look at me. We're going to see an amazing harvest of people that you've been praying that God would reach them. Family and friends, your son, your daughter, your spouse, your parents, your neighbors, your co-workers, the people you've been praying for for a long time. God, I don't know how you can get to them. I don't know how you can reach them. I'll tell you, this could be the week. All that breaks because you put praise in your heart because there's worship that's leading. And, and Judah will plow up. Praise will plow up that hard heart. And the whole city starts getting stirred and saying, who is this? Now we get to stand up and say, this is Jesus. Come on. There's so many people turning to Jesus right now. I really believe when we're able to get back together, it's going to blow your mind the number of people that, are, that, that, that gave their hearts to Jesus in, in an online service just like this somewhere around the world. New believers going to be baptized. People going to find their purpose. People going to settle their yesterdays and find some freedom. Get in a group with somebody. Come on. They're, it's just amazing what God's going to do because we're going to lift Jesus high in all this. And I'm calling calling you to a week of worship. Come on, it's Holy Week. I'm I'm calling you to make room this week, every day of this week, leading up to Easter for worship, for praise. Every time you have some downtime, put on some worship music. Every time you have some time to watch the news, you think, I'll just, I'll read one more story. It's not, don't read one more story. Just fill your mind and heart and room and living room and house and car and office space and cube. Just fill it with worship and watch Jesus move and watch Him draw people to Himself. Come on, bow your heads. Grab your family around this Palm Sunday. I want to pray for you. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, I pray for families and and single adults, moms and dads, husbands and wives who right now have their heads bowed around a screen somewhere, worshiping along with us online, our, our digital church family, our virtual church family gathering together, the Holy Spirit uniting us in this service. God, I pray for a a spirit, a season of worship to, to literally engulf our church and our families. God, I'm praying we would focus on You. We would exalt Jesus. Everything that come out of my mouth this week, God, as we enter this holy week, as we enter this this amazing season celebrating the resurrection, the hope that we have in the resurrection, that God, that worship would be our first response. 
Worship would engulf our families. Worship would be the language of our children and our family. Come on, that praise would make a way that we would exalt You and lift You high so that You could move in our lives. So that You had room in my heart to give me the things I need, to strengthen the people who need it, to, to lift me up. God, You're the lifter of my head. And, and God, when You do, I'm just going to keep worshiping God. And then I pray, use that worship to draw people to Yourself. God, Your Word says, if I be lifted up, Jesus, I'm going to draw all men to me. I'm praying for that this week. God, I'm committing to a week of worship. I'm making room in my life for more worship. More honoring God. More verbalizing. More, more, I'm going to engage my mouth. Come on. I, I, just, I, I, I want the, the high praises of God to ever be in my mouth, the Bible says. Stay in this posture of prayer wherever you are. If you've never given your heart to Jesus, I will not close without giving you a chance to do that. Come on, He can be that Hosanna, that Savior, the Lord of your life today. Right where you are, with whatever you've got to bring to Him. Come on, you say, well, it's not much, it's broken, it's fractured, it's okay. God wants all of you. He doesn't want just a part of you or the part that everybody knows about. He wants every part of your heart. So if you've never prayed that kind of surrendering prayer, it sounds just like this, with your head bowed and your eyes closed and from the depths of your soul, say, Lord Jesus... I believe that you came to earth to pay for my sins. That you were crucified. That you were buried. And that you rose again on the third day. And I believe that God raised you so that I could have eternal life. So I receive the forgiveness that you purchased for me on the cross. God, I repent of my sins. Give you all of my life. I just exchange all of my brokenness and hurt and pain and sin and choices and mistakes. I replace all of that, God. I receive the forgiveness of God. I repent of all of that. I ask You to forgive me. God, don't just save me. Be the Lord of my life. God, take up residence in my heart. Be the King of my life. And I'm going to exalt You. I'm going to worship You. I'm going to live for You every day of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow, what an amazing service. Thanks for joining us uh, this weekend at City Hills Online. Such an honor to have you with us. Why don't you share this with every friend and family you've got. Come on, somebody that needs a message of hope, a time of worship on this Palm Sunday. I hope that you share this. And I hope maybe during the week, just send it around a few. You know, let people uh, sort of keep ingesting this word of hope that I brought you this weekend. Don't forget, join a virtual small group. That'd be the best place I can see you this week. I hope that you're in a bunch of them. Come on, get connected with church family. If you prayed a prayer today to give your life to God, or if you have any prayer requests, you can fill out the connection card, the prayer request card. That giving link is for you. Thank you for your faithfulness and tithing and offering in this season. Here's the last thing. Do not forget, I get to see you a couple of more times this week. Every Wednesday night and Friday night, I'm on Instagram and Facebook Live. I'm bringing a fresh word of hope for you there, and we have a lot of fun. I'll be honest with you, it's a whole lot more laughter than it is preaching, but we have a great time. I'd love to see you there, and next week is Easter, and it's going to be amazing. Good Friday service right back here at 7 o'clock. This Friday, Good Friday, right back here at Church Online at 7 p.m., and then Easter Sunday, one massive amazing celebration of the resurrection at 10 30 right here at city hills church i love you have a fantastic week i'll see you soon